Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through thyroid function tests. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash thyroid function tests. Or in the endocrinology section of the second edition of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. And you can find flashcards and questions to train your knowledge on this content and help you remember the information for longer at members.zerodefinals.com. So let's jump straight in. Thyroid function tests can be used to check for abnormal thyroid function and determine the cause. Let's start with some basic thyroid axis physiology. Thyroid hormone levels are controlled by two structures in the brain called the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, specifically the anterior part of the pituitary. The hypothalamus releases thyrotropin releasing hormone or TRH. TRH stimulates the anterior pituitary to release thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. TSH stimulates the thyroid gland to release triiodothyronine or T3 and thyroxine or T4. T3 and T4 provide negative feedback on the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary. When there's too much T3 and T4, this suppresses the release of TRH and TSH. Suppressed TRH and TSH results in lower amounts of T3 and T4. The lower T3 and T4 offer less negative feedback and less suppression of the TRH and the TSH and this results in more of these hormones being released and a rise in T3 and T4. Through negative feedback, this allows the thyroid hormone level to be closely regulated and kept within normal limits. Next let's talk about hormone testing. Thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH is used as a screening test for thyroid disease. When TSH is abnormal, T3 and T4 can be measured to gain more information. Primary hyperthyroidism is when the thyroid behaves abnormally and produces excessive thyroid hormones. The high levels of T3 and T4 thyroid hormones suppresses the release of TSH, causing a low TSH level. This means primary hyperthyroidism causes a high T3 and T4 and a low TSH. The top causes of primary hyperthyroidism can be remembered with the GIST mnemonic. G for Graves' disease, I for inflammation or thyroiditis, S for solitary toxic thyroid nodule, and T for toxic multinodular goiter. Secondary hyperthyroidism is where the pituitary gland behaves abnormally and produces excessive TSH, usually from a pituitary adenoma. The excessive TSH stimulates the thyroid gland to produce excessive thyroid hormones. TSH, T3 and T4 will all be raised. Primary hypothyroidism is where the thyroid behaves abnormally and produces inadequate thyroid hormones, T3 and T4. Because there's abnormally low thyroid hormones, there is an absence of negative feedback, which means there's an increased production of TSH by the pituitary. TSH is raised and T3 and T4 are low in primary hypothyroidism. The top causes of primary hypothyroidism 
are Hashimoto's thyroiditis, iodine deficiency, and treatments for hyperthyroidism, such as carbimazole or radioactive iodine. Secondary hypothyroidism is where the pituitary behaves abnormally and produces inadequate TSH, for example, after surgical removal of the pituitary gland. Inadequate TSH results in understimulation of the thyroid gland and insufficient thyroid hormones. TSH, T3 and T4 will all be low. So to summarise the TSH and the thyroid hormone levels, T3 and T4, in primary hyperthyroidism, there's a low TSH and a high T3 and T4. In secondary hyperthyroidism, there's a high TSH and a high T3 and T4. In primary hypothyroidism, there's a high TSH and a low T3 and T4. And in secondary hypothyroidism, there's a low TSH and a low T3 and T4. Next, let's talk about autoantibodies. Antibodies are produced by the immune system and cause the immune system to attack whatever the target is for that antibody. Autoantibodies are where antibodies target the body's own tissues. Antithyroid peroxidase or anti-TPO antibodies are antibodies against the thyroid gland. They're the most relevant thyroid autoantibody in autoimmune thyroid disease. They're usually present in Graves' disease and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Antithyroglobulin or anti-TG antibodies are antibodies against thyroglobulin, which is a protein produced and extensively present in the thyroid gland. They can be present in normal individuals without thyroid pathology. They're usually raised with Graves' disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and thyroid cancer. TSH receptor antibodies are autoantibodies that mimic TSH binding to the TSH receptor and stimulating thyroid hormone release. TSH receptor antibodies cause Graves' disease and therefore they'll be present in this condition. Finally, let's talk about imaging the thyroid gland. Ultrasound of the thyroid gland helps diagnose thyroid nodules and distinguish between cystic nodules, which are fluid-filled, and solid nodules. Ultrasound can also be used to guide a biopsy of a thyroid lesion. Radioisotope scans are used to investigate hyperthyroidism and thyroid cancers. Radioactive iodine is taken orally or intravenously and travels to the thyroid where it's taken up by the thyroid cells. Iodine is used by thyroid cells to produce thyroid hormones. The more active the thyroid cells, the faster the radioactive iodine is taken up. A gamma camera detects gamma rays emitted from the radioactive iodine. When more radioactive iodine is taken up by a specific area, this area will emit more gamma rays. This gives functional information about the thyroid gland. Diffuse high uptake is found in Graves' disease. Focal high uptake is found in toxic nodules of the thyroid gland. And cold areas which have abnormally low uptake can indicate thyroid cancer. Research has consistently shown that testing yourself after learning a topic has a powerful effect on how long you retain that information. This is known as the testing effect. Studying and then testing yourself results in longer lasting and stronger recall on that information 
when tested at a later date, even when compared with additional study sessions. If you're preparing for a medical exam and you're not regularly testing your knowledge and practicing your recall, you're failing to maximize your potential. The Zero to Finals member site contains flashcards, short answer questions, multiple choice questions, and extended matching questions that are purpose built to supplement the Zero to Finals content, helping you build your internal database of knowledge and take advantage of the powerful testing effect. If you like the Zero to Finals notes, books, videos, and podcasts, then you'll love the member's site.